to the lucky ones amongst you who do not yet know me. I'm Sawyer. And this is the state of the Velociraptor. It is Yapsiu 2015. The theme for this one is art and engineering. And we always try to make the keynotes on topic. So I was thinking about art. We're in Spain, a place that inspires art, that is inspired by art. And we're thinking, what can we do with this? So we're thinking about the name of the talk, the name of the keynote, state of the Velociraptor. Maybe we can do something with that. The obvious thing was to remove the Velociraptor and put in the word art, get rid of the art. <laughs> That's not very ingenious. So we're playing with this. Uh, maybe putting the word art there and have state of the art instead of the Velociraptor at the same time, maybe that will work. But that's not proper English, I'm told. <laughs> so we tried artful. Um, we thought about restful, but that, no, that's not good. <laughs> no. So, OK, something else. Um, art Celeraptor, playing on the joke of the original name. So maybe that one. I like this one, Gardnosaurus Regex. It's pretty good. I think we stopped when we came up with this one. The problem is that when I try to pronounce it, it sounds like this. And in my mind, I think that I sound like this. So I decided to go with State of the Velociraptor. We'll keep it, but I'm just going to put in art there as an optional thing. If you want to use it, go ahead. And if you don't, that's also fine. Now, this talk was originally done by Matt Trout, an Englishman who has redefined the term drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to start with a big thank you to Matt. Um, he's probably off in some corner, furiously writing code, or more likely nursing a bad hangover from the night before. Either way, I want to say thank you to Matt. Um, so Matt's, Matt's not doing this this year. And I'm not as entertaining as Matt. My English is not that good. But I know my accent is clear. <laughs> the question then is, why am I here? And I think the best way to explain it is try to think of James Bond or Doctor Who. It's a role that is passed on. <laughs> Maybe a better way to explain it to you is that it's kind of like how an API stays the same, but the implementation changes. <laughs> because, you know, I do ask myself why I'm here. And it's a, it's a question I often ask myself, and so do my colleagues, my friends, my family. But that's actually not the point that I'm making. So this year, it's me. And I hope you'll enjoy it. So moving on, what is the state of the Velociraptor? Something that we can ask in different ways. We can ask, what is the state of the Velociraptor? Or we can say, what is the state of the Velociraptor? Or if you're list inclined, you might ask, is what of the state the Velociraptor? Which makes perfect sense. The state of the Velociraptor, as a talk, has always been a way for us to talk about <coughs> Perl. Now, we do talk about the Perl language quite a bit. But the state of the Velociraptor is a way for us to talk about the Perl community. It's a way for us to talk about you, to talk about us. And we all love Perl. It's a great language. It is dynamic, but it's not just dynamic, it's flexible. It's not just flexible, it's elastic, right? It's strong, it's fun, it's interesting, and, well, occasionally it's also surprising. And Perl has a lot of great features. And we always discuss what is our killer feature. I would like to rephrase this as our key feature. So what is our key feature? What is the best thing in Perl? Is it the expressiveness in Perl? When you read variables, you usually know what they are, unlike a lot of languages. Um, we try to write code in the same way that we would read the code, which is really interesting. Considering people talk about Perl as a read-only language, we are actually able to write it in the way that you can read it. Maybe it's the fact that we have an approach of accepting a different way of accomplishing the same thing. We always talk about diversity in implementation, right? This one caters to CPU optimization. This is memory uh, optimized. This is very suitable for extending, and this is very, uh, very suitable for 
hot code paths that are just really fast. And sometimes it's even just this is a style. And that's totally fine. And we accept that. So we're thinking maybe Tim Toady is the best thing that we have. Maybe it is the best feature that we have, the key feature. Maybe it's backwards compatible. Perl is by far the most backwards compatible language in our range. It has the difficulty of being a system language where people depend on it. So we have to provide backwards compatible. And the efforts put in Perl to provide backwards compatible are immense. And you can see a lot of programs from 5.6 that you can put in on 5.22 and they work, which doesn't make any sense. And it still works. It does. It's incredible. So maybe it's this thing, that you can basically rely on Perl to be stable no matter what, despite being a dynamic language. Oftentimes we think of CPAN. It's probably CPAN, right? Because CPAN is our key feature. We have an amazing amount of modules and contributions that people make. So all the framework around it is, is very complicated. It might just be our key feature. Or might, maybe it's the integration that it has with CPAN testers. So you upload some code, and the scope gets run on different versions of Perl, on different architectures, on different operating systems, different module versions, different configurations of these modules where this is missing or this is available. And you get to see how everything works. And it's all automatically done. You just uploaded a tarball. That's it. <coughs> maybe that is our key feature. I don't think it is. But I think our key feature is actually something wholly different. I think community is our key feature. I think the biggest thing in Perl, the greatest thing in Perl, and don't get me wrong, CPAN is amazing. Everything that I mentioned is incredible. These are huge achievements for any language. But I do think the greatest thing in Perl is our community. It is you. It is us. So when we talk about community, the first question we would ask is, where are we? Where can you see Perl? Where can you see the community? Starting with the usual suspects, we have Perlmux. Perlmux enjoys the latest design features of 1993. <laughs> there were attempts at introducing recent technologies, such as colors. <laughs> that didn't pan out. But you know what? It works. People like it. People still use it. It's not dead at all. So maybe it just stays that way. I don't know. Maybe we'll be able to drag it into our century. Could be. IRC, in a lot of places, a lot of servers, a lot of networks, a lot of channels, is known as a cesspool where conversation goes to die. It is filled with negativity. It is filled with pretentiousness. It, feels, it is filled with patronizing behavior. IRC Pro had um, a lot of negative associations with it, and for a good reason. But with the help of a lot of people, I'd like to mention Sungo, I'd like to mention Peregrine, I'd like to mention Gene Hack, Karen Etheridge, and, um, and Bruno Garu. Uh, Breno, it's going to kill me. Um, with the help of these people, we've actually changed IRC Pearl to provide a solid place for you to have conversations, to coordinate, to cooperate, to enjoy meeting other people, to feel unthreatened, to feel welcomed. And this is a big improvement. If you've been on IRC in the past and you had a bad experience, I implore you to try again. And I think you're going to have a different experience now. Where else? We are on Reddit. And while it could be improved, we're getting there. So that's already good. We're on Twitter. And I have to say that out of everything, I really like Twitter probably the most. Because Twitter allows us to exist there not as Perl developers like you would be on IRC or on Perlmonks, but as people. You're there as a person. You also probably might be doing Perl, but that's it. And it allows you to interact with the outside world, which is actually the theme of a lot of our conversations on how to bridge and how to, to get out of the eco chamber. You know, and how do we actually interact with the outside world? How do we get to converse and be in touch with someone who's not just in the Perl community. Twitter allows us to do that. It's fantastic. You should check it out. Stack Overflow provides, right now, probably the best and most high quality information on Perl from uh, users. If you've ever Googled for anything having to do with Perl, 
you've probably been, you have probably been thoroughly depressed because Google tends to track a lot of articles and a lot of posts and comments and blog entries that are just patently wrong and dangerous at times. Things that are just silly advices, things that don't make sense, things that, that are not even Perl or are the worst Perl that you can find, things you didn't know existed in Perl. One of the best ways to learn things that Perl can do that no one thought it could do but it really shouldn't and how could it even compile, you just Google. But Stack Overflow changes that. Stack Overflow, people go in there and they spend a lot of time to provide high quality content. People answer questions with an abundant amount of details. They provide information that is insightful, that helps us learn so much about how Perl works. I am constantly surprised by what I read there because there's so much I don't know. And I know it's not a challenge for me, but I'm sure a lot of other people who actually do know quite a bit about Perl are also surprised. It's fantastic. People go there and they answer questions, they vet other questions, they vote on the right questions, they interact politely and respectfully, and they provide high quality content. Stack Overflow is now becoming a better source than Google for that. And because Stack Overflow gets high rating on Google, Google starts indexing those answers instead of those really awkward blog posts that we see random people in the wild write, and you're thinking, this can't be Perl. But then suddenly you see a sigil and go, oh, he is talking about Perl. Oh my god. So any of you who actually work on Stack Overflow help with that. Thank you very much. A website that I personally like is PerlTricks.com. David Farrell does amazing work on PerlTricks.com. He gives you a very good indication of how you present content. The copy, the design, the structure, the text. It's just so well done. And we can learn a lot from that. And the articles are a lot of fun. They're very interesting. It might not be the most useful thing that you'll read that day. It might not be a practical thing, the latest article or the one after that. But it's always fun. It's always interesting. And it's a really good way of presenting information. Pearl Weekly, a project by Gabo Savo, one of his many, provides us with a weekly newsletter with everything that we could be interested in in Pearl. The fun part is that it even goes a bit outside of Pearl and shows us a few things from our neighboring communities and from our neighboring technologies. It's fantastic. You should register for it. And now it's also maintained with the help of Yannick Champo and Neil Bowers. Another one of uh, Gubble's projects, Pearl Maven, that helps teach Pearl, and Andrew Solomon's Geek Uni. There are now more good resources for learning Pearl. Like, really good resources, not just junk that you see on old websites. Evazon, a company that I actually hold dear to my heart, has created Built in Pearl to showcase and to highlight companies and businesses that are, you guessed it, built in Pearl. And of course, blogs, 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 Pearl org. With the help of Dave Cross, Aristotle, and Aaron Crane, they provided us with a really good framework for writing blogs. And people liked it so much, they registered so quickly that we found a lot of problems right away. And now with the help of Jeff, we're getting to revitalize it. So it's even better. So do we have a community? I would say yes. But maybe we can go beyond that. Do we have communities in plural? Yes, sir. Or more yes. Yes, yes, sir, or, or, or very yes. Much yes. Mucho yes. Mucho si. Let's just go with yes plus plus. Because I do think that having multiple communities is even a greater component, a greater part of Pearl. So I want to delve into some of these smaller communities. And of course, I would gravitate, because I am biased, to first of all, web frameworks. We have a lot of web frameworks. We have a few big ones. And they have their own smaller communities. For example, Modul for example Modulicious allows us to have really crazy, interesting, bleeding edge innovations in web. It's very interesting. It is the roadrunner that just moves forward. And things might fall and things might break, but that's okay because that's the price that we pay for going full speed. 
And we have that. And we have Catalyst. And Catalyst is as stable as a rock. And what I mean is that it doesn't move anywhere. <laughs> Although it's just a tease, because Catalyst is actually still being developed by John Apirokowski. So it actually is, con uh, it has continued development. It has a very large um, community of users. The answer tries to kind of fall in between those, where it's stable, but it will change things, and it will move forward. Um, it will add features, but probably not as fast as Mozilla's. Is. Definitely not as fast, and that's okay, because we have different niches. And a lot of these communities actually share the same people. And there's WebSimple that basically provides the smallest, simplest syntax for dispatching. And these communities have a lot of success. Mozilla's just had their first conference. It's very successful. Dancer is organizing its second in October, and WebSimple, <coughs> WebSimple has its own IRC channel. So, that's something. What else? What other sub-communities do we have? Um, the tool chain, CPAN workers, including CPAN testers. These are people who work really hard on all of the modules that our modules depend on. They work on all of the infrastructure that our applications rely on. That's the work that they do. Probably in the shadows, when I was looking, very quietly, murmuring obscenities at what we do. <laughs> but they do amazing work. And it is, it is fantastic. And I want to say thank you very much for everyone who's working on the tool chain. We really do appreciate it. Another subcommunity that I think is either <coughs> underrepresented or is misrepresented is the P5P. P5P stands for Pro 5 Porters. This is a loose affiliation of programmers who maintain and develop the Pro 5 language. They are the Pro 5 core developers. They're developing the language itself that most of our work depends on. They have a mailing list that merges a lot of streams of information from different sources. It makes it a bit harder to track. So it will have the commit summaries that Nick sends, by the way, from Morty. Uh, Pointing names, please stop it, I don't like it. But they do. Um, they have um, tickets, information on tickets, discussion on tickets, discussion on the list. Um, there are a lot of other summary emails. So it, it's a lot to keep track of, but as one person explained to me, it is optimized for getting things done. And it seems to work for them. The problem is that I think because of that, it's harder for us to track the list. It's hard for us to know what's going on in the Pro Core. And then Pro 5 core, I should say. We, we rely on Rick or on maybe Matt, maybe me, probably not me, to know what's actually going on in the language. But I think that the problem that we have is not just that, but also the image that we have of the Pro 5 porters as a group of old people who like to argue all day long and do nothing. And I think it is unfair, because if you actually notice People complain a lot because this old, old, old 5.6 or 5.4 or Pro 4 version thing has been deprecated. Why? Maybe I have something from 1991 that is still being, uh, that it wants supported and they argue over this or there's a new feature and people are arguing, why do we need this new feature? I think we can have a better feature. And these arguments exist because the, this work is done, because people are actually doing stuff and then we argue over it. So they clearly are working, and they're working really hard. And the second problem that we have with this image is that the list is filled with negativity. And this has actually changed substantially with the introductions of the uh, standards of conduct and the correct <coughs> policy on how to interact with people. Because some people don't understand how to interact with other people. They assume that negativity and obscenities and insults actually promote something other than being ignored, and they don't. They make everyone feel bad. No one listens to you. And for a lot of them, you know, you know trying to develop something in an environment that insults you all the time, that is negative all the time, it's really hard. I'm amazed that we still have all these people working on it. The good thing is that this has changed. There's a standard of conduct. You have to behave towards people as human beings. And you have to be respectful, even when you vehemently disagree. And that has changed. And I think that we have to recognize 
the big effort that these people are doing. And I want to say a big thank you to all the Pro 5 porters. I released one version of Pearl. I can say that it was very difficult to do and 99% of the work was actually done by everyone else other than me. And it was still very hard. And they can only imagine the work that they do. And they deserve a good thank you and to be recognized for it. <laughs> now, Neil Bowers, who I mentioned from the uh, Pearl Weekly, he is not a mini community <laughs> yet. But other than curating the Pearl Weekly, Neil also has a blog. It is a very good blog, and he talks about community, and he talks about CPAN, and he talks about development. Neil shares a lot of his ideas. All great things come from small ideas. And Neil has a lot of interesting ideas. He had one very interesting idea last year, at the end of the year. He said, every month, I will pick a module. And whoever asks me for a module to contribute to, I will provide that name and you contribute to it, let me know, and each month I will give you a new module. All you need to do is submit a contribution, one or more, using a GitHub pull request, okay? Which is the equivalent of a patch. And every month I will send you another one. Once a month, every month. And you call this the pull request challenge. I spoke to Neil about it, and he said, yeah, I, I was expecting, I was really expecting a dozen people. I was hoping at least 12 people would email me and say, I would like to have a module a month to contribute to. These are people who wanted to contribute to something meaningful, something important. And there are a lot of modules that could use help. So he was hoping on at least a dozen. He also said, I, I wished I would have up to 20, because 20 people, that would be great. For a British person to say, great, that is amazing. <laughs> Come January, first month, he had 365 people. <laughs> this was not good enough to just email him personally and get an email back and that's it. It wasn't that easy anymore. Because he actually tried to curate important modules. Not just things that need help, but those that matter, those that people depend on, those that have issues waiting, issues that were waiting a long time. He actually worked really hard in curating this and he, he wrote a lot about it in his blog. So it wasn't that easy. And what people actually did was start working on the pull request challenge. So we created a GitHub organization uh, with the help of pullbox.com and Rick, we got a discussion mailing list so people can converse and can talk about it and co coordinate. And we started writing guides, we were writing documentation. I even wrote a guide. So people who said, well, I want to contribute, but I've never done this. How do I, do, how do I create a pull request? You know? So we started writing these guides. What do we do if the author doesn't answer? What do we do if the author doesn't agree with what I'm thinking I should contribute? How can I try and reach the author again? So all of these queries, and, and we now have a discussion list, and we talk about it. Um, the number, by the way, 365, he said that one thing uh, he, noticed, he, he noticed it boomed, and then he got one email that said, Dude, you reached the Hacker News top story. This was on New Year's Eve. So he wasn't expecting that. None of us uh, were. And this project is still going on. So far, it had 480 people in it. It's pretty amazing. That is amazing. Talk about outreach. These people have contributed. These people have helped. They fixed a lot of problems. They improved a lot of modules. They learned a lot. They taught each other a lot. It's fantastic. You can join today. It's still early. You don't have to, though. There's always tomorrow. <laughs> so if you want to join, just email neilb at cpan.org. Email and say, I'd like to join. That's about it. The next subcommunity, the pull request challenge being a community in itself, another one reminds me of Yapsi Asia. That's where I start. Last year, I was at Yapsi Asia. If you're wondering how many people they had, over 1,300 for a Yapsi. And they thought, this is just, wow, we can do better. This is a joke. So they upped it. They got over 2,100 people this year, just now. Now, let me help you fathom what it means to have over 2,100 people at a Yapsi. How many people do you imagine go to Yapsi Europe or to Yapsi NA if you go there? 
300, let's, let's kick it up a notch, let's say 400. You know what, I'll give you 500. Let's go with 500. Now, double that. Now double it again. We're still not there. Can you imagine this? This, of course, is where my math tricks end because I'm not very good at this. But, but going back to Yapsi Asia, it's incredible, it's amazing. And here's the most interesting statistic. It's almost exclusively Japanese. Yapsi Europe has all of Europe, people from the States. Yapsi Ne has all of America, North America. It has people from Europe. But Yapsi Asia, almost entirely Japanese. How many people here went to Yapsi Asia? That's it. And some of you are Asians who lived in that area or live there, and some of you are Larry. So, <laughs> and that brings me to Japan. I don't know that much about Japan. I went to Yapsi Asia. It was amazing. I can tell you, though, that they do have amazing hackers. That I know for sure. They have a lot of Pearl going on. If you ever think about Pearl and you don't know how many people actually use it, ask them what they're doing. They're doing incredible things. And they're really nice people. But the problem is that there are a lot of barriers in the way. There is a big gap between the Japanese community and the European community and the North American community. These are barriers of language, barriers of culture. There are differences. These are not differences that we can't bridge. They're not easy, but it's possible. Okay? Now, I do have to mention, Miyagawa-san does not count as bridging this gap. <laughs> he is more American than anyone I can name here. He lives in San Francisco, okay? I love you, man, but it, you're, not, you're not Japanese anymore. <laughs> so, going to Yaptasia, I can tell you that it was a very difficult experience for me because of that gap. And I can imagine that for them it is even harder we actually have quite a few of them joining us today. They traveled over 20 hours. They spent the night in Madrid, if that says anything, on commitment. One of them lost his baggage. But they're here today, and I would like to ask you to try and bridge these gaps. Try to fill in something that I know I failed at when I tried it, and I'm making a better effort this time. And I would like to start with thanking them for being here in their language. So please join me with a big thank you for joining us today. This year we also hit a few milestones. I'm going to mention just two. CPAN, which we all like, has reached its 20th anniversary for its first upload. Did you know? Just this August. Incredible. Poor Critic, a fantastic code analyzer reaches 10th anniversary, the brainchild of Jeffrey Thalhammer. We now also have Perl Lint. Perl Lint is a similar tool using a C++ lexer. Um, it was done by Kawakami-san. I hope I pronounced it right. Did I? Good. Thank you. Um, otherwise known on his pause uh, ideas, uh, Onzion. Did I get that one right? Good. Thank you. And he did this with the help of a TPF grant. And the TPF actually does a lot of stuff. It maintains a lot of grants, and they're very important. For example, the Pro 5 Core Maintenance Fund that helps maintaining and developing Pro 5, the Pro 6 Core Development Fund, the Pro 6 Hackathons Fund. And they actually are the ones in charge of the Pro, um, uh, the Blocks Pro Org Revitalized Grant. So that's for the TPF. I would like. If I may, one round of applause for the TPF. If, if you are working at a company that has some money and you're looking to contribute, think about the TPF. Last week, I've asked people, what do you do with Pearl? What kind of stuff are you working on? And I got some very interesting answers. I'd like to share some of, this with you, some of these with you. And I think it's interesting because it's stuff that you guys are doing. Right? People here, we're all doing this. So 
One person wrote, I do 80-bit game development testing. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Writing bug <laughs> trackers, content management system. Someone's running Pro on MIPS to get um, statistics from a lighting system. I'm not sure why. Someone's doing statistical machine translation between Irish, Scottish, and Manx Gaelic languages. I can't speak any of them. FreeBSD panic analyzers. I don't even know what that is. It just sounds cool. <laughs> Stock uh, technical analysis, microchip pick microcontroller compiler. It's not bad. RESTful APIs, SMS gateways, billing systems, database backup tools, modern chat interfaces, coder dojo, which is a way to teach young adults programming. And Prairie Nix is working on it with Pro, which is awesome. Teaching kids, it's incredible. And Ruth is working on talking about open source and diversity and writing for opensource.com. And her recent article was about the diversity in the pro community. Advocacy, it's fantastic. <coughs> so these are really, 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 really cool stuff. I really like them. Here's what I ask of you. You have one year. I will probably be here again next year. Probably not here or here because it's not gonna be here in Spain. But the next time I give the state of the Velociraptor, I want you to contact me and tell me what other stuff have you people been doing? Okay? I think we have a lot to gain from sharing the craziness and the ideas that we have and the cool stuff that we work on. So contact me, let me know. So all these projects, these are community projects, of course, but we didn't really answer the question, what is a community? You always talk about what a community is, right? I'm supposed to tell you what is the state of the community. But maybe we need to think of what does the word community actually mean for us? People consider the community to be projects. Maybe it's specific people. Maybe it's a place. Maybe it's an event. You know what? Let's talk about events. What kind of events do we have? So we have Yapsi. Yapsi is per continent, sort of, because Russia is big enough, they have their own, their own Yapsi. So it's kind of by continent. It is yearly. We have workshops. Workshops are per country, usually. They are also yearly. We have hackathons. Hackathons are per topic, usually. Um, Amsterdam X had two hackathons. Neither of them had a topic. Yearly or whenever, because both of them were in the same year, we're not really sure why. Um, so we have those. We have promongers meetings, right? Promongers meetings are per city, usually as well, because Amsterdam specifically has two promongers groups. So, okay. It's monthly, or if you're a Cluj PM, it's every few months. But it's as big as the biggest workshop. So, kind of weird, right? So, mostly monthly, when we can, we, we can get around to it. We also have ad hoc meetings otherwise known as emergency social. And they always have that exclamation point because it's always emergency, as if the word emergency does not indicate an emergency. <laughs> the keyword here is actually not emergency, it is social. And the reason this is the keyword is because we are social. In Israel, we have the Tel Aviv Promongers group. I remember one incident in which someone asked another person who comes every month why they come to the meetings. And his reply was a person named Meir, and he said, what do you mean? He said, well, you don't program in Perl. You program in Python. Do you even use Perl? He said, no. <laughs> why are you here? And he had the most amazing look of not understanding as if it was in a different language. He just looked at him. And his first response, I loved it. He said, Pearl, Python, it's the same thing. I read it just the same. You are not special. <laughs> it's not like I can't understand the very complicated syntax that you have going on. But the second answer that he gave, I liked even more. He said, I'm here because this is my community. I'm here because these are my friends. This is where I hang out. 
these are the people I interact with and I socialize with. What he actually nailed down was so incredible to me that I still can't forget it. It happened years ago. What he nailed down is that even at a Pearl Mongers meeting, it's not about Pearl. Think about that. It is the one thing that all of you assume connects us. It wasn't even about that. It had nothing to do with Pearl. This is an incredible thing. Now you go back. We have Yapsi, right? We have workshops. We have Pearl Mongers. These are ways for us to meet every year, every year, every month, right? But let me tell you what those are. They are excuses, excuses, excuses. <laughs> A better word for this would be justification. They are a justification for us to see each other. That's all they are. They're a justification to our bosses, to our family, right? No, I'm going because it's a conference. It's important. It's business. It's work. It's not. That I'm not going to have fun. Yes, I'm taking two weeks off, but that's not the point. It's a lot of travel. Our family knows better. And with Larry, he just, he just couldn't. He couldn't justify it until the entire family comes over. So, um, so that's, that's really what those are. They, that's really why we do this. We want to get together. That's it. That's why we do it. This entire thing. You people are smart. You can understand this material when you read it at home. You can talk to these people in email, or on IRC, or, or on Twitter, or you can read the code. Sometimes. Some projects, the code is actually clearer than the person speaking and explaining it, right? But we want to get together. That's what we want to do. It's an excuse to get together. So we go back to a community. What is a community? Well, now I can at least tell you what it isn't. And it is very important to be clear about this. The community is not a tangible thing. It isn't a specific person that you think of that you see in the audience, or that you see on CPAN, or that you see on YouTube. It's not these people. It is not a specific project that you are familiar with. It is not a location. It is not an event. It is not code. Quick story time. I go to Cluj Napoca quite a bit. It is the Cluj PM home. I was invited there once. I basically didn't really leave. I'm just going on vacation to work. And I went there with Upasna Shukla, Theo Van Huzel, and we went to, the, to a meeting there. And if you know these people, you're probably thinking, uh-oh, because it's uh, one Indian, one Dutchman, and me. And the interaction is just really funny. Or maybe if you're Scooby-Doo, you're thinking this, right? <clears throat> now, when we went there, one weekend, Jorge and Natasha, who are here, I know, I'm sorry for embarrassing you, told us, hey, we're going this weekend to a remote cabin. Would you like to join us? Of course, we jumped on the idea. When we heard a dog was involved, oh, wow, that was the easiest decision. And we went to Buchu which is uh, a mountain area far away. It is beautiful. It is remote. It is so quiet. There's almost no one there. There are very few houses, no running water, and you walk for so long, and you climb mountains all day long. It was so much fun. And we spent an evening on one thing, other than a very difficult puzzle. It was to explain to Pasna, how to pronounce where she lives. <laughs> the name is Hasperplas. <laughs> <laughs> she pronounces it Hasperplas. And it spent one entire evening, Theo and me, just repeating Ha. And she would go Ka. And it, no, no, Ha. She would go Ka. And we're like, look, first you need to understand these are different sounds. They really are. It's not the same sound. And I know she's here, and I'm sorry to, to um, embarrass you. Not really, but um, I think I should say that. And I remember this incident. I remember that, that weekend. It was a lot of fun. 
And the reason I remember it is because to me, this was a manifestation of the community at its peak. Because these people are not just friends or acquaintances from a conference. These people are really good friends. These people are family. This, this is what it was. It was a real community. It wasn't just, we get together. It was, we're really good friends. And it was beautiful. So we're back at this concept. And the theme here is art, right? So is community an art? Can we somehow justify my entire keynote by somehow binding it to the original idea of the entire conference? Maybe, sometimes it might be art if you do it right, you know? But at the end, or I should say EOD for end of day, a community is actually about family. A community is about one very important concept. It is about a home. And I have a very personal request. Take a look at how we work, how we operate, how we converse, how we communicate. Are we providing a home to each other? Are we providing a family to each other? I think that in a lot of places the answer for me would be a very clear resounding yes. That's the reason that I'm here. I could probably learn another language. I actually do write in other languages if I need to. I know that Pearl fits in my head and that's why I use it. It thinks the way that I think. Which actually doesn't say a lot of good things about me. <laughs> but at the end I don't look at it as a job. I look at it as my community, clearly because it is a home. And I consider the people in the Pearl community my family. It is a very strong concept. It's a very strong idea. And my request for you is to think it over and try to think of what can we do to increase the community as a home, as a safe place, as a family, a place where you can communicate to others, a place where you enjoy having conversation, when you have laughs, when you have a good time, where you learn, where you teach. Think of how we can bring more people into this family. They don't ha even have to code in Pearl. It has nothing to do with that. And how can we make this family bigger? How can we make it into a bigger home? So at the end of this, I have to do this thing. I have to answer the question that I set up at the beginning, which is practically the reason I'm here. The question was, what is the state of the Velociraptor? If the Velociraptor is a way for us to talk about the community, the question is, what is the state of the community? And I think that would probably try to summarize it with, were we able to provide a home? And ask yourselves this question. Are we able to do this? Are we doing it? Is this what we've done? And I think that if I got that feeling that it's a home, if any of you had that feeling, then I think we did pretty good. And our state is not bad. Thank you.